The long wait is over, Tokyo Ghoul finally returns for a third season. This is my review of the first episode of Tokyo Ghoul Re. I was struggling when I was deciding if I was going to watch the third season of Tokyo Ghoul, otherwise known as Tokyo Ghoul Re. That's because the second season completely burned me. I did not like the way the second season ended. You just need to see my review to completely understand. And I even said in my review that I was, I was kind of done with Tokyo Ghoul at this point. Like, even if they brought back another season, I wasn't going to check it out. But I got a lot of requests for this one, and I have to say that the very first episode of Tokyo Ghoul Re is infinitely better than anything I actually saw from the second season, in my opinion. In fact, what I love most about it is that it follows the ghoul investigators, which I think is infinitely more interesting. When I was watching the first two seasons of Tokyo Ghoul, I harped on that all the time. I'm like, why can't we have the episodes focus on these guys? Their stories seem like they would be legitimately more interesting than what's going on with Ken Kaneki, who in the first season started out as sort of like a weird, timid character who suddenly went completely insane and by the second season barely even said a word, only to get killed at the end by Arima. I think. Although after watching this episode right here, I have a feeling that Ken Kaneki is even closer than we think. What I will say is Tokyo Ghoul Re is almost like a reboot in some senses, as there is a completely new cast, all just thrown right in your face, and they are all ghoul investigators. And they're special ghoul investigators. They go by the name of Kinks, or Quinks. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. And by the way, going forward, Get prepared for me to mispronounce a lot of stuff. There are some hard Japanese names to say in this show. So, we have these ghoul investigators known as the Quinks, which are humans which have the ability to use ghoul powers. So they can actually summon Kagune, weapons from their body, which take the form of giant bullets, knives, and even giant elastic tails of doom. Even this one character has a giant sword for an arm, and I have to admit, it looks pretty freaking awesome. I will say that the powers in this series have always looked really unique, despite the fact that they're all basically just giant scorpion tails. Speaking of which, the opening scene where they introduce these ghoul investigators was pretty awesome with this one guy who's in this cab who tells this guy to go to this underground tunnel and he lets him know that he's a ghoul investigator. He doesn't need to go any further. He can smell the blood on this guy. And this dude who is actually a ghoul just like rams into the side of the road and this big battle ensues and we finally get to see them in action. And I have to say that the uh, driver of the cab had a Kagune that looked way too much like Saucery from Naruto Shippuden. He basically had the same exact scorpion tail, but again, we need some cannon fodder. We've got to show off these brand new ghoul investigators, these quinks, as they are called. And the first one is uh, Ori, and he basically has like this big giant bladed arm. It kind of looks like a skull with a giant blade jutting out of it. It just looks really cool. He looks like he might be one of the main focuses of the series, or maybe even like a rival character to a main character of the show. It's kind of hard to say, considering how much they actually jump around to each individual investigator, and I like that, as I'd like all of them to get focused, as they all seem like they could be developed into something cool, such as Shirazu, another character who has these very big sharp teeth and a hilarious bowl cut, and he can also summon a Kagane, which allows him to fire missiles from his back, which is really unique and unlike anything I've seen from the show. And this is a big moment because we don't even know what these guys are actually capable of. It's only at this moment we learn that they have the ability to use ghoul powers. It's really awesome. And it almost seems like they're not going to be able to take this guy down. That is until their superior arrives, who goes by the name of Sasaki. Sasaki Heisei. And he's definitely the main character of the show. I have a couple of theories about Sasuke, but we'll get to those at the very end of the review. Basically, this is a straight introduction to this group, which consists of all of these people who live together under one roof. They're humans with ghoul powers. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of wacky shenanigans amongst them, as they're all very young and hungry and want to prove themselves to their other superiors. They want to rank up. Basically, the hopes and dreams is that this group can basically be the next generation 
of Arima. That's kind of what they're trying to build them up to. And it looks like this entire series is going to revolve around them and their investigations and going after bad guys who all have really crazy nicknames because of the crazy things that they do. Throughout the episode, they're after these two ghouls in particular, one known as Torso. He got the name because... Well, when he kills people, he only takes the torso. And another villain by the name of Orochi, who's a mysterious hooded figure with a crazy mask and a giant pincher tail of doom. And he arrives at the very end of the episode and definitely the most epic scene of the entire episode when he fights against the entire team. But when Sasaki arrives at the end with his super awesome sword, that's when we finally get our clues to the fact that Sasaki might be someone that we already know. Really, there's a lot more to this episode, but... What's the rundown on this episode of Tokyo Ghoul Re? Infinitely more entertaining than the second season, and a lot of that is owed to the fact that we are spending time with the ghoul investigators. Arguably, I think their story is more unique. You know, the whole thing with the other characters from the first couple seasons about them being ghouls and struggling with the fact that they have to live in a human world and that they're constantly being hunted by people, it just feels like the type of story that I've seen like a million times. But I really like the concept of this uh, ghoul investigation team, especially now that we have ones that can use those abilities that are going after them. There's just a lot more intrigue behind it, and it doesn't seem as, and I mean this in a nice way, pretentious. It, it just seems, uh, in many ways, the more traditional route, I think, was more effective for this type of show. I, I'm, I'm not saying that the other parts were needlessly complex or anything, but they definitely wasted a lot of their time, and they definitely did if we're not even going to be seeing a lot of the old characters anymore. The only, like, classic characters who actually popped up in this episode was a, a little quick cameo from Arima. We got Mato, who's returning, who's still looking very good and still kicking all sorts of ass, by the way. That's actually Sasaki's uh, superior. And we uh, even get to see the return of the one little girl from Anteku actually return. Uh, she's the one who actually warns the, uh, the Torso Ghoul Killer, which I thought was kind of interesting. Interesting. I'm curious if we're going to see any more of Enteku people. Like, I know we got to see Toka return. There's no doubt they have to bring her back. And then, where's Ken Kaneki? Was he really killed by Arima? Well, here's my personal theory. At the very end of this episode, there is a crucial scene where Sasaki finally does arrive to battle against Orochi and save his other comrades from getting killed. And suddenly, he starts to freeze when he's revealing his Kagune abilities, and inside his mind, he's talking to someone who is quite clearly... Kaneki. It looks just like him, especially the way he appeared in the last season and at the end of season one. And it almost seems as if he's struggling with this other side of himself. And that's when I realized there is no doubt in my mind that Sasaki has got to be Kaneki. But why is he Kaneki? Has he been brainwashed? Has he been manipulated? I mean, we've seen that throughout the series, his mind has just been melted multiple times. I wonder if there was still a chance to go back in there and maybe revert him into something completely different. I, I just think it's obvious. He's battling with his old self. He just doesn't even really know it quite yet. If that's really what's going on, it's awesome. Otherwise, he's probably like, I don't know, a clone of him, or he's related to him or something. Like, there's clearly a connection between these characters. But when that moment happened, I genuinely got excited because I was actually seeing resolution. I was seeing a connection to the previous show, and yet at the same time, this story looks like it's going to be able to do its very own thing and still be very interesting. Like I said, it's kind. it kind of feels like a soft reboot, that takes place within the same world. Really, I, I just think this is going to be a better experience overall. That being said, I still don't think it was a perfect first episode. I, I think some of the fight scenes at the end, while they did look good, there were moments that looked a little choppy. It wasn't perfect. But for what it was, man, this was so much more entertaining than uh, the, the, the previous seasons of Tokyo Ghoul, I have to say. Uh, the intro is very similar to, it's definitely got the same style. It's also a great teaser for all of the uh, new characters and even some of the old ones who are going to be returning. Uh, really, if you want more Tokyo Ghoul, check this one out. Um, I'm very amped to see where they're actually going to be going with this one. Um, I just really hope that I don't get burned again. <laughs> That's the only thing I really have to say. Um, I haven't seen any of the OVAs either, if anybody's uh, curious about that. I haven't seen, I think it's uh, called Tokyo Ghoul Jack and Tokyo Ghoul Pinto. I haven't seen any of that stuff yet. Um, really, I, I just want to see where this one's actually going to be headed. Plus, I just 
got a lot of requests to check this one out. So I reviewed the first couple seasons, might as well check out the third. Um, what I will say is this was a surprisingly good first episode and uh, has got my spirits up for more of this series. And considering how much I hated the end of the second one, that's a big accomplishment. Uh, so I'm giving this one right here a 4 out of 5. I would love to hear your thoughts about the episode, however. Please tell me all of them in the comments section below. Were you scorned by Season 2 and swore you'd never see more Tokyo Ghoul? Or have you always been a hardcore fan? What did you think of this episode, and what do you hope to see from the rest of Tokyo Ghoul Re? Tell me all your thoughts in the comments section. Let's have a cool conversation. Thank you guys for watching this review. There are a lot of brand new anime this season. If you guys have a special show you want me to look at, uh, tell me in the comments section, and if I have the time, I will look at the show and try to give my thoughts on that. Uh, any suggestions, I'll take them, so there it is. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, stay down, baby!